All right, guys, welcome to another episode of The Buff Show. Today, we are going over a market report for the month of April. Today is May 17th. We're, they, we just got April's numbers released, so we're going to dive into those. Me and Austin here, so let's jump into it. Yeah, I've got some interesting movement to uh, to share with you. So just actually, you want to go over the rates right now so they yeah. know where we're sit- sitting at as of the 17th? Yeah, so mortgage rates right now, a 30-year fixed, you're probably between six and a half to six and three quarters on average. 15-year, around 6%, and FHA, 6.34%-ish, jumbo, 64 So you're all in like the mid-sixes on yep. average. Yep, exactly. So we're going to dive into this, but kind of the overarching message is this. Fluctuations in mortgage interest rates have caused buyers to pull back with pending sales dropping 5.2% month over month. Meanwhile, the median existing home sales price declined for the second month in a row, falling 0.9% nationally from the same time last year. Yeah, so new listings in the state of Utah, they are down. Again, we'll jump into the exact numbers, but we'll talk about what that means for the median sales price. Well, and it's crazy. This is the largest year-over-year decline since January of 2012. Yeah. So we're going to dig into it. So again, keep in mind, we're reviewing the month of April. We're in May. Real estate numbers lag. And also, this is for the whole state of Utah. So different pockets of the market are doing different things. But this gives you a good idea generally what what we're seeing here in Utah right now. Yep. So first number we're going to talk about are new listings. So this is a count of the properties that have been newly listed on the market in a given month. So again, we're comparing April. So in April of 2022, there were 6,226 new listings. April of 2023, there was 4,275 listings. So a negative 31% decrease in Mm -hmm. new listings. This number is interesting because we're going to talk about inventory and it says the opposite. So new listings does not necessarily mean inventory. In fact, it does not because the the change is a complete different story. But well, inventory, right? yeah, inventory kind of comes and goes depending on contracts and sales and all that. But yeah, yeah. Why do you think we're down so much on new listings? Yeah. Well, our the the days on market is up since last April, right? Mm-hmm. So that's how we're able to have more inventory but less new listings and have it still make sense. It's because right. they're, they're sitting there longer. But why do you think more like more people were selling in 2021 and 2022 and like yeah. there's a lot less? People cashing out of their equity. And yeah. right now they're like, oh, well, I can't get as much as I yeah. could have gotten last yeah. year. That's the biggest thing is everybody's like, I'd love to sell or like change, like upgrade my house, but to leave that 3 or 4% interest rate, they're, right there and and to go out and buy another house they're seeing significant increase in costs yeah to try and like make that upgrade or change to the point where yeah. it's not making sense for people and so you see a lot of people doing remodels additions like trying to make what they can work because they don't want to leave that cheap yeah. interest rate well to upsize right now it's so hard because yeah. if you were to not upsize and just move into the exact same thing your mortgage almost like doubles, yeah. let alone upsizing, right. you know, where it could triple. Yeah, and that, that's exactly what happens. People are like, I have a ton of equity here. I sell, but I leave that 3% interest rate, get into a more expensive house, and yeah, your payment likely could double or triple, Yeah, which is crazy. Yeah. But <laughs> that's, well, that's the market right now. <laughs> okay, pending sales. You want to get this one? Yeah, so this April compared to last April, there's 23% less pending sales. What do you make of that? Just less less properties going under contract, but we also have less new listings, but we've definitely seen like a downtick in in offers, like you're not seeing as many multiple offers as you were last year. And the biggest factor to this is just interest rates. I think yeah. there's less people being able to afford houses right now due to the 6% interest rates that we're in right now. I'm somewhat surprised that pending sales is down because last year, remember, homes were only under contract for like three, four weeks, right? Yeah. 
because you had to be so competitive. Mm -hmm. But now you don't really have to be that competitive. You can kind of take your time under contract. Right. So I would have guessed pending sales would be up just because homes sit in pending. Under, yeah, in pending longer. Yeah, that's but a good point. I guess guess it's not making the difference. Right. Yeah, that is interesting. So closed sales. This is a count of the actual sales that closed in, in, in a given month. So again, we're comparing April. April of 2022, there were 4,475 homes that sold. April of 2023, 3,138 homes that sold. So that's a negative 29% decrease in closed sales. I know we felt this, like yeah. comparing our closings from last year, mm -hmm. Q1 of last year to Q1 of this year, it's been yeah. like a significant decrease. And again, I, I, it's it just coming down to the state of the market with interest rates and everything. I think it's pushed a lot of people out. It's people have pumped the brakes a lot and yeah. uh, have chilled. People are just kind of sitting tight, watching, waiting to see what's going to happen. So remember, like Peyton said at the beginning, these, these numbers lag, right? So while April closed sales were down, you know, 30%, we're seeing something kind of different yeah. happening now. Right. Now that we're in the middle of May. Well, yeah. and it was such a, it was such a unique April because we will st we were still buried in snow flooding yeah. issues like there there was a lot of a lot of things going on in utah <laughs> that that wasn't just like interest <laughs> rates related that i think could have made like yeah. that spring fever lag a little bit it was like the market was literally and figuratively frozen right yeah <laughs> yeah okay days on market yeah so days on market from 2022 april to 2023 april we're up 222%. So last time, That's or crazy. last year this time, a home sat on the market for about 18 day days, right? 18 days. It now sits there for 58 days. That's the new norm. That's crazy. That's <laughs> but if you look going back 2008, 2009, 2010, homes were on, on the market on average 100 to 120 days. Right. So I think it's it's key to realize that even though our days of market are higher, we're still on average or lower than like yeah. history, historical days on market. Yeah. So it's still that 58 days on market is still a good number. Just plan, prepare, realize that. And if you're going to sell, realize it might take 60 days before you get an, an offer and go under contract. And then you're another 30 days to, to close 30 to 45 days. So you could be on like from start to finish from the time you list to close 90 days right Right now, looking at the average numbers. Yeah. Some go faster, some go slower, but average, you're about 60 days. Yeah. And we don't have the, over the last couple of decades, we don't have that number pulled. But if I had to guess by this chart, it probably is 70 or 80 days right. on the market is what the average would be if you went back 20 years. 58, I mean, pretty normal. Yeah, it's not bad at all, actually. Especially when you consider what, you know, what we're going through. <laughs> right. right okay. So, yeah. Median sales price. Yeah, Drum so roll. here we go. This this was the big stat that I when I was going through this preparing, I was like, oh, whoa, okay. So median sales price. Last year, the median price was $532,000. This year, dr Drum roll. Drum roll. <laughs> 478. So it has dipped, declined, depreciated, however you want to say it, a full 10%, over 10%. Yeah, that's wild. And the reason why I'm making such a big deal of it is because we hear people all the time say, it's too expensive right now. I'll wait for the dip, right? This is this is the dip right, right now. The dip has come. And yeah. it's interesting because if you look at the graph, well, one thing I want to point out, I love the median sales price because it's it's average, I feel like, can get skewed right. um, depending on like the, the high sales and the low sales. Median, you're just kind of knocking those off till you get to that middle number. Granted, we have had less closings, but I feel like that's a pretty accurate indication as to what the market's done in Utah. And again, some markets are different. Like I've seen some where they definitely haven't dropped. 10%, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. but it's interesting as you look at this chart, you'll see 
that it's actually not the lowest. Like the median sales price in 2023 has been lower than 478. Like I mm-hmm. think our bottom was actually in like January or February. That yeah. was kind of like the the drop. So if you were to go from July or I don't know, it's probably April, May, June of last year to January. That's the the high and the low. But right. we're actually trending up. The past looks like four, three months have been trending upward. I but mean, I see what you're saying. Like when you compare month to month, yeah, it is the biggest percentage change, but not the lowest price. Right. So I mean, you can use the year to date, which we have as well. But it's it's eight point seven percent. It's pretty dang close to ten percent decline yeah. as well. Yeah. I mean, you're basically nine percent right there. So yeah. Which is crazy because you look back and our the median sales price in 2021, it went up 26%. In 2022, it went up 24%. Yeah. And now we're down 10%. Yeah. So it's, it's not near as aggressive as the appreciation right. that we saw in 2021 and 2022, which yeah. is wild. I mean, those yeah. are crazy years to have almost a, like a 25% increase year after year, two years in a row. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah, our <clears throat> high interest rate environment still isn't enough to bring, you know, bring that plus 25% down to, you right. know, 0%. Yeah, so. which I think is what a lot of people were expecting or hoping for, yeah. the buyers at least. Right. So our average sales price, again, this is adding all the sales up, dividing it by the number, and that gives you the average. This, this number is different. So from 2022 to 2023, it went down 6%. Again, these average prices from the median vary a lot. In April of 2021, it was 44%. 2022 was 13%. Now we're down 6%. Mm-hmm. Again, I, I, I really like the median, but still it's showing that we're down. So median was 10%. This is 6%. I think yeah. it's, it's easy to say that we are down. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you using the median. Sometimes, so luxury homes, sometimes it's a luxury home type market. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's not. And so if you use the average, you're allowing it to skew your numbers. So. Yeah. And if any of you have like specific areas or cities that you want an, an analysis pulled in, we can get that for you. All these numbers, it's nice using the Utah because it kind of gives you an idea as to what the state's doing in general, but we can definitely break it down into sub markets. So. Yep. Yep. Definitely by county at least and even cities. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So percent of original list price received. This is the percentage found when dividing a property's sale price by its original list price, then taking the average for all properties sold in a given month. So we are down 6.5% in sale price from last year to this year. So another way you can say that is homes are on sale or discounted about 4% off of what they were last year. Yeah. So, so sellers are getting 4% less than what they listed at right now. So it's a, it's a good time to be a, a buyer. You're able to get some concessions. You're able to get, the, like, there's some wiggle room there on, yeah. on houses, which yep. is nice to see. Yep. A little easier to put in an offer and not be competing with a ton. However, again, you got a story that says things are kind of changing on that. Right. right? Yeah. Okay, housing affordability index. This index measures housing affordability for the region. A higher number means greater affordability. So in 2021, we were at 112. 2022, we were at 79. 2023, we're at 77. So affordability from 2022 to 2023 has gone down 2.5%. And this is going off of the median household income and like the median home price. So things are very unaffordable right now. And it's factoring in like interest rates. I think that's one of the biggest thing is house price, pricing and interest rates is what's making it so un- unaffordable right now. But yeah, it's uh, it's a tough market right now. It stalled out last last month. It was seventy seven. This month it's seventy seven. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's kind of it's like how much lower can it go though? Right. You know, I don't. And last May, it was 76. Last June, it was 76. Yeah. So it's about just as affordable right now as it was this time last year. Right. But because of different reasons. Right. 
So inventory of homes for sale. We have 30% more inventory than we did this time last year. So last year we had about 6,600 homes for sale. Now this April, there's about 8,600. And this different. is going back to what you were talking about, where our new sales are, yeah. our new listings are down, but our inventory has actually gone up just because homes are sitting on the market longer. So even though we're getting less new listings, it, it's taking longer for those to sell. So we are ending up with a surplus of inventory at the end of each month, which is good. It, it's making it yeah. like buyers have a lot more choices to pick from, right? which is nice. Yep. Yep. And, the, and uh, days of market are going up, so it's taking longer for those to sell. Right. I saw a, a study that said those that bought a year or two ago, they were pretty unhappy with their purchase, mm -hmm. probably because they didn't have a lot of in inventory to pick from. Right. So they just picked whatever they could get their hands on. So hopefully now with more inventory, people are actually finding their dream homes. Yeah. I mean, it, well, it's hard to be a buyer and to look at a bunch of houses and then you're stuck with, like, if, if you get one, you're feeling lucky. And yeah. You're kind of stuck with it. It was like, musical chairs. It really was. Like, if, if you landed one, you're like, sweet, I won the lottery. Let's buy it. Like, yeah, just lock it need, up. Just we need a house. <laughs> and, and buyers were unable to do all the inspections and research and appraisals and, and really verify that that's where they wanted to be. They were just... Yeah. It's like beggars can't be choosers. Right. That's how that's that's how it was last year. Right. So month supply of inventory. This is the inventory of homes for sale at the end of a given month divided by the average monthly monthly pending sales from the last 12 months. So another way I like to look at that at this is anything less than six months supply inventory is called a seller's market. Anything over six months supply is a buyer's market. So in 2021, we were 0.9. In 2022, we were 1.5 months supply. In 2023, we're 2.7. So we're still a far cry away from that six months yep. supply to where it would be considered more of a, a buyer's market. So we're still in the seller's market. If you look back in 2009, 2008, 9, 10, we had 12 months supply of inventory back wow. then. So we're 80% up from last year, but we're still in the seller's market. Yeah. So we've we've talked about how the dip that we're in, that is, you know, interest rates are to blame for that dip. However, there's more than just that factor. I think this has something to do with it. So if there's more inventory and interest rates are higher, right, then prices have to come down. Right. It's just economics. Your supply and demand, if you get a lot more supply, mm -hmm. then your, your price has to come down. Yeah, it's getting it's getting tugged at for sure right now. So Still not enough, but more. Yeah. More supply. So overall, we just want to give what we're seeing in the market right now. So like just this week, I ran into some appraisal issues on a property we're working on resolving. We wrote an offer on some land out in Woodland. That one ended up being in multiple offers. So we're trying to decide today how we want to handle that. And it's interesting because that lot was listed all of last year and just that. So I'm like, yeah. oh, we have time. This is probably not going to go that fast looking at last year. And like looking at these numbers, we're like, we're down. There's more listings. Things are sitting longer. But now... Like this month now. This month <laughs> now, I'm like, man, multiple offers there. So I'm like, that's interesting. And that was on land in Woodland. And I couldn't find comps. Like I, I went back three years and I found some comps that were like in 200, like one high 100s to mid 200s. And this lot was in the 300s. And I'm like, man, they, it just feels high. But they got multiple offers. I'm like, that's crazy. And then we have another listing coming up in Kaysville. And I was doing just some pre-market research and trying to get a feel for what it's going to be like. And I always call all the listings that are active and under contract. I called this one that just listed last week and they went under contract in a few days. So I'm like, mm -hmm. dang. And I called the agent. And I'm like, hey, how, how did it go? And keep in mind, this was 430000 in Kaysville. Mm -hmm. She's like, we, I did an open house on a Thursday. I had 30 plus groups come through That's incredible. on a Thursday, which is crazy. And then she said that they got seven offers. Holy And I was cow. like, how many, of those, how many of those offers were above asking? And yeah. she said, all but one. No way. Yeah. Oh, wow. So 
But again, that's the entry level. Yeah. Like, that's kind of like the entry to the market right now. So to be expected a little bit, but we are seeing some some warming up, right? Yeah. Here in Utah, we've had some massive flooding issues um, over the past 30 days, and it's getting better. There's still areas that are flooding, like Huntsville right now is having some issues with the South Fork River. Ogden Canyon had an issue. Mm -hmm. There's been mudslides. So I think people have been a little bit preoccupied with like, man, can I just keep my house from flooding right yeah. now? Like or that homes falling off the sides of mountains. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like a, dra a house in Draper slid off the side of the mountain. That was my worry. Yeah. There was there was a week where I was going around to all my rental properties, like installing sump pumps, and and you've been doing the same thing. Yeah. Like you've had some sinkholes on your property. Yeah, drainage issues. So I think a, a lot of people had those similar concerns, and now that that's kind of passed, it's like we're seeing the spring fever start now right. almost. Yeah. Versus before, I feel like it's like it's – like you said, the market was frozen a little mm -hmm. bit because of the snow, but we're unthawing. Temperatures are warming up. People are like, we mowed our grass for the first time yeah. yesterday. Yeah. And so it, the market's changing. Things are warming up. I have like four or five listings coming on the market next week, which is crazy. That's it's nuts. like, where have they Just been? Boom, right? All of yeah, a sudden. all of a sudden. But it's that the weather pattern, things are changing. Yeah. And you have an offer out right now. Sounds yeah. like you might be in multiple offers. You're waiting to hear back. Like you don't know. Yeah. That's, that's what I was going to say is going to your multiple offers story, like seven multiple offers. The thing is, as agents, we hear that, like we hear that starting to happen again on certain properties. So then whether we need to or not, that somewhat kind of affects the offer on another house. Who's to say if that house is going to have multiple offers? So you, you better bring your A game. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, the market might just be heating itself up, right? Like yeah. working itself up. Yeah. Even if... You know, maybe you, you wouldn't have put in an offer at that price. but Well, and here's the thing. We've been at these higher interest rates for about six months now, and I think people are, they're like, they're getting used to it. And they're yeah. like, okay, now's the time to get off the fence and get into the game, yeah. right? We've seen prices fall, and it, the second interest rates come down, I think it's going to skyrocket prices back up. So it's yeah. like... It's tethered to the same string. One falls, the other is going to go up. The other one goes up, the other one's going to come down. Well, you you even have me nervous sharing that story. <laughs> now, I, as an agent, I'm second guessing. Well, is that seven you know seven offer home the same thing that is going to happen to this this house we put an offer in in Logan? Like, right. should I have gone up ten grand? Like, that that's well, a real thing. We'll like, find out. We'll, we'll report <laughs> yeah. next week. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> so. Anyways, that's just kind of what we're seeing. The sentiment of the market next month will have a lot better update. I think May will be a big month to look back on and be like, hey, where are yeah. we going? What's going on here? But overall, like it's interesting. We, we're we seeing a huge dip in prices, like a 10%. That's a big drop. Yeah. But now I'm seeing the activity and like everything's pumping back yeah. up. So Especially with the Fed saying like, hey, we're probably done. Yeah, I, I agree. I think May will be a big tell. What's, on what's, we're going. what's your prediction? Next, let's make some predictions. Uh, let's look at the the median sales price. Like, what do you think next month is going to do? Yeah, I think we're going up for sure. Yeah, on median sales price, I just don't know by how much. Yeah, I think we'll, we still might be in the negatives, but I feel like we'll be, yeah, around five, negative five percent versus ten. Yeah, and that'd be big. Yeah. If, if we're still at a six and a half percent interest rate, and we're you know only down five percent. That'd be huge if if that happens. So yeah, well, we're, I'll we'll go with see. It. I'll roll with five. You're gonna roll with that? Yeah, still in my still in my guess. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good guess. I'll go with it. Oh. Awesome guys. Well, thank you for tuning in today. Hopefully, it was helpful and informative. And if you guys need any other questions or if there's anything we can do to help comp out properties or whatnot, yeah, hit us up. So, thanks. Till next time.